Why are routers either these like monstrous spiders or these like huge towers, right? I mean, everything else in electronics seems to be getting smaller and smaller, but not routers. If anything, they're getting bigger. Right. So we've sort of settled on these two general router shapes and it all comes down to antenna design. So any decent, fast Wi-Fi router that you get now, it's going to have at least eight antennas packed into it. And so manufacturers <laughs> options are either to, you know, kind of have them on the outside, make it look like a big spider or sort of bundle them all up into a package like this and just kind of have that array of antennas on the inside and, and sort of hide yeah, it that, and have it more compact. Now that I'm holding them next to each other, it's quite obvious, right? Yeah, they're both the same they're, they're height. The same, they're <laughs> the exact same height, right? Yep, that's yep. Yeah, they definitely don't want to compromise on performance based on the, on the different shape, but uh, that's why it all comes down to antenna design. So what bands are they using, like radio bands? So Wi-Fi these days uses 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and as of the last couple of years, 6 gigahertz too. Ooh, the new shiny. So <laughs> what version of Wi-Fi did that get added? So Wi-Fi 6E added that 6 gigahertz band. Okay. And so Wi-Fi 7, it's just included? Yes. And implied? Yep. So the 6 gigahertz band, how much bandwidth is there up there? So it's actually, I think, over a gigahertz. I think it's something like 1,200 megahertz up there. Yeah, it's just kind of centered around 6 gigahertz, but it's actually more than a gigahertz wide up there. So the whole 2.4 gigahertz band, I know, is only 80 megahertz wide. I mean, that whole, all those years we were on 2.4 gigahertz, we were all sharing 80 megahertz. Yep, yep. Putting 20 megahertz or 40 megahertz channels all overlapping on the same 80 megahertz band. Yeah, it's, so, it's so tough. this is 15 times, if I'm doing the math in my head right. Exactly 15 right. times more bandwidth. Exactly. So what does that unlock? So where with 2.4 gigahertz, you're kind of locked into using like a 20 megahertz wide channel. Opening up and using all that bandwidth up at 6 gigahertz means that we can easily use 160 megahertz or even 320 megahertz wide channels. So you can have channels that are way wider than you can at the lower bands. So what's the relationship between the width of the band and the speed of the connection? Like, is it one for one? Is it a 320 megabit connection if it's 320 megahertz? So everything else staying equal, the wider the band, the more bits you can put over it. And so similarly, I mean, if the same width band, if the signal strength is higher, you could put more bits over it. So are there any downsides to six gigahertz? I think the biggest downside right now is just that not a lot of devices support it yet. So you may invest in a really nice Wi-Fi 6E router and then discover that all the laptops and phones and Alexas and things you have don't actually support it yet. But outside of that, there's some physics problems with six gigahertz too, where it's just tough to propagate through things. So in your apartment, you may have no problem getting 2.4 gigahertz from one side to the other, but up at six gigahertz, all of a sudden it doesn't go through walls and doors quite as well. So you can just run into those sorts of issues where it's really fast, but can't actually connect across your apartment with it. Oh, enough about megahertz or whatever. These things are computers. They, they must have operating systems. What operating systems do they run? So this is a Linksys router and it's running a custom Linksys build of Linux. And this is a banana pie and it is actually running OpenWRT, which is a kind of network device centric Linux distribution. So tell me more about OpenWRT. OpenWRT is an open source Linux distribution that is really centered on network devices. So routers, access points, that sort of thing. It has a really nice web interface and a really broad set of packages that make a lot of sense if you want to make a really smart router. The banana pie. So th this is an open source made to be a router or a Linux board. And it's pretty nice and it's reasonably priced. I can't help but notice though, I mean, you got stuff like the Raspberry Pi which is a fair amount cheaper. And if you look at the specs, I mean, it seems to have it's got some USB, fast it's got Ethernet, it's, it's got, got Wi Fi. It's got a lot less <laughs> Ethernet. But otherwise, I mean, is there a reason you can't just use a Raspberry Pi as a router? So, Raspberry Pi is a phenomenal general purpose Linux device. So, if you have, you know, some Python scripts that you want to run and you want to have some basic, you know, network connectivity stuff, really hard to beat the Raspberry Pi. It's awesome at that stuff. But, if you want something to like run the network for your house, something like Atlanta Pi makes a lot more sense where it actually has gigabit switch and it can actually manage, you know, five Ethernet ports at a gigabit all running the same. I mean, it actually has SFP ports. So you can actually run like two and a half or 10 gigabit. So what is SFP? 
So SFP is an interconnect where you can actually go to fiber, you can go to copper. The connector is a lot longer, it's a lot more complicated, but you can actually go to like a couple kilometers of fiber if you'd like. Oh, <laughs> do a real nice. long run that you can't do with Ethernet, SFP is nice for that. Obvious thing I've noticed, of course, is the Wi-Fi, right? Raspberry Pi has Wi-Fi, but it is slow and short range. I guess the antenna is just a chip on the board where right. there's no ability to use giant outside antennas. Exactly. You can use giant antennas, you can actually get a Wi-Fi 7 module and drop it in. I mean, something... Like the Banana Pi and the Banana Pi itself actually has like mini PCI slots. So you can upgrade the Wi-Fi and kind of keep on top of it and have actual fast, you know, kind of desktop class Wi-Fi hardware in there where you don't really get that on the Raspberry Pi. So does Speedify run on OpenWRT now? It does. We released that a couple weeks ago. You can now just use our regular Linux install procedure and install Speedify on OpenWRT devices. So what does that get you? Why do I want speedify on my router so juggling multiple wan connections on routers is tough and you know nothing else out there really does the channel bonding so a lot to gain by putting speedify in charge of your wans on on a router like that right so you can plug in like two different ethernet like starlink and comcast yep and hey there's usb can i tether a cell phone you can tether a cell phone you can use the wi-fi connections to connect to another wi-fi network and kind of use that as a backup yeah the parent share stuff does that work with the router? Yep. Nice. So if the router loses internet, it can actually ask phones that are on its hotspot, hey, can I use it to keep everyone else online? Exactly right. It's all just seamless to people that are connected to the hotspot. Yep. That's pretty slick. So OpenWRT, the normal way to configure it is through that web interface. So we actually embed uh, the Speedify UI into the OpenWRT web interface. So the same... Oh, the whole app? The whole app. So the same user interface you're used to seeing on mobile devices and on desktop, you can pull that same thing up on the web interface for OpenWRT. And if you're if you're more of a console person, we also have the CLI. So you can use the CLI to manage all that stuff too. Nice. If you want to see more technical discussions like this one, make sure to hit that subscribe button.